Whoever said tomorrow is another day didn't check the weather from the director of Independence Day. This is just massive. Like, this is the real thing. The day after tomorrow. Rated PG-13 Memorial Day. and welcome to another edition of 24 Inside. Now listen, if you haven't just watched the most recent episode of 24, which takes place between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., as we all have, you might want to turn your computer off because we are going to spoil some of this for you. We are going to talk about what has happened, maybe even what's going to happen. And last week we got to talk to the actors who play Carlos and Michelle. Well, they're kind of the heroes of the show. But what about the villain? That's right, the guy we love to hate, Stephen Saunders. Who better to talk about Mr. Virus himself than the actor who plays him? A big welcome for Paul Blackthorne. <laughs> welcome. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether to uh, kiss you or run from you. Well, the kiss was fine, actually. So, <laughs> You look very dapper. Now, it's really, uh, uh, is it fun to play, to play the villain? Uh, yes. Yes, it's lots of fun. I get to do lots of dastardly things and get away with it and go home afterwards. It's great. Go yeah. home afterwards, drive away, yeah. yeah. crime-free and everything. Um, now, listen, we have a lot of questions here from the audience and also from uh, emailers. So I just want to start with a question from the audience. Susan Olson. Susan? There you go. Very good. Ah, very, very good question. She wants to know, do you now hate turtlenecks <laughs> it, it's almost like you know to be a bad guy you got to be in a turtleneck there's always this thing when you're uh, when you're doing a TV show all the actors are clamoring to get go home with their wardrobe and all the rest of it and I have to say the last thing I wanted to go home with was a turtleneck so <laughs> uh, no I'm, I'm I'm done with turtlenecks for a while yes is yeah. that right I left it in the trailer did you was that so? Did you talk about that with the director? Was that like a, a very specific thing that they wanted for you? Well, when we went through the wardrobe stuff, we I was definitely looking out for something I would be comfortable in for some time, mm. and it was indeed comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little more dramatic than a sweatsuit. Yes, I yes. think so. Might yes. not have been as menacing. Okay, we have an email from Sean Fitzgerald at Virginia Tech. He wants to know what did you have to do for your audition on Twenty Four, and did you think you got the part when you came out of it? Um, actually, it was a funny one, that because I actually went in to see the 24 guys for the part of Amador, and um, I was getting phone calls from my agent and everybody saying, you're down to the last two and all the rest of it, and my mother was coming into town, actually. I remember thinking, God, if I get the part, then my mom, oh, God, she's going to go, it won't, it won't be too. You want to tell your mom you got a part? Well, no, I wouldn't have been able to take her away, so I was, I was sort of <laughs> a, bit, a bit on the edge about the whole thing. Um, I'm sure if you wanted it. But then I didn't get that part, um, and they called my manager for the part of Stephen Saunders um, for another actor, a fairly well-known actor, and um, that wasn't to be, but my manager mentioned to them, well, what about that guy that you saw for the Amador part? And, uh, and they offered me the part after some discussions, I'm sure. So, um, yes, so that's well, how I got it. I will say you do seem more youthful than your character on, and maybe also it's because in 24 they seem to breed at about 10. I mean, your character in Keith of Sutherland, I, I mean, I'm like... I what's going on there. When did they, you guys had kids young. I know, I know. When I discovered, you know, you create a backstory as an actor and all the rest of it, mm -hmm. and when I discovered that I... Uh, had a 19-year-old daughter, I thought, oh. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Right. Get the imagination going here. Well, speaking of backstory, I was wondering, what did you create for yourself in terms of the backstory of your relationship with the daughter's mother? Because we don't hear about that. I'm not telling you all that. But no. I blame her. She put me through hell, I tell you, and that's why I'm doing all this stuff. Well, it was the divorce, I... the alimony, the whole thing, it just killed but me. But the so. daughter is a, so is a soft spot for Saunders. It's his only soft spot. So I'm wondering if the, if, if the wife was one of the... Yeah. It was also a sweet spot. Uh, well, she obviously was for a few minutes, um, but um, <laughs> who knows how long it went on for. But, uh, yeah, needless to say that, um, as I say, without going into Sauna's whole backstory, his daughter is the only 
true love he's ever experienced. It is. Hence the reason why he's such a caring parent. Very good. All right, we have an email from Allison Sloan in San Francisco. When the cameras are off, are the interactions with your fellow actors unusual since you are basically trying to kill them? No, we carry on trying to kill each other after the, um, <laughs> after the tape. And yeah. steal the good parking spaces on Absolutely. the lot. Absolutely, and... yeah, yeah. No, we, we have a very, um, a very decent relationship with one another. Convivial. Yes, convivial. Yes, yes. very good. Mind you, ha actually, uh, yeah, it's quite funny that because with that stuff with Reiko, when mm -hmm. um, I think it was a couple of episodes ago, when I had to pull that tape off her. Yes. And um, we do that, we shot the scene and I pull this tape off her and then we go cut and I'm like, I'm terribly sorry, I didn't <laughs> mean to I said, was it okay? Oh, you could put a bit of red on it. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, well, we, we get back to... Well, she didn't have to wax to, that day, you know? Yeah, we get back to normal after, after it's all over. <laughs> Just speaking for myself, okay? I don't know how, what her facial hair situation's like. Yeah. All right, we have a question from the audience. Hey, Nikki from the UK. Ah, from the UK. Nikki, very nice. All right. As a British actor, do you find yourself typecast as a baddie? And then we have a kind of a follow-up from that email from Colleen Dunn who says, you're so believable as the villain, do you worry that you will be typecast as a villain because of 24? Um, uh, well, the baddie thing was, was a strange one because I, before I came to Los Angeles about two and a half years ago, I'd done three consecutive baddies. Mm. One was in an Indian film called Lagan, which right. um, the whole of India hates me. <laughs> um, and then I did a little independent film where I was a sort of a nasty, sort of earned too much money and did not naughty things sort of fella. And then I did a, it was a hospital show in England called Holby City and I was pretty much a bad guy on that. And, um, and when I came here I started playing some heroes and I thought, yes, there's more to me than a bad guy. And, uh, but the thing that seems to have put me up here at the moment is uh, going back to the bad guys. So um, it's good fun to be doing one again, actually. It's been a while. Yeah. So well, you're playing a good, good guy on ER, though, right now. Yeah, yeah. I get to bound around and be a cad on ER and all the rest of it. So, uh, Listen, you two network show guy. Yes, I know. It's funny, isn't it? Now, it's different probably the ER fans from the 24 fans. And I have a Hollywood reporter here from yesterday where you talked about, and you, and you say this lovingly, that the 24 fans are, are, are kind of lunatics. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to the losing fans. I'm in love. Absolutely. Do you yeah. find are you are you stopped by these twenty four? Well, fans? I get strange people. I get people coming up to me with a big smile, going, "Oh, I love you, Nia." And then I get the other day with the twenty four. I had this guy walk into this, this cafe. I was sitting there, and he looked at me and went, "Oh my God, it's Stephen Saunders." <laughs> and, I, and I went, "Hello, how are you doing?" He went, "God, he freaked me out, man." <laughs> and he ran off. Well, that's good. <laughs> you're you're doing your you're doing your job. All right, uh, we have an email from actually 13-year-old Sarah in Pennsylvania. She oh, can't be too scary. Yeah, the 13-year-old here is emailing. If you had a choice, would you rather have the Jack Bauer role or, or another one? Do you like playing the bad guy? I'm quite happy to have had this role, to be honest. Yeah. I think Keith has got the uh, Jack Bauer role down now, so I think he's. Yeah. I think he's he knows all, everything. I, think he's doing right. I don't at think anyone's times. up for that part. Yeah. Yeah. All right, audience. Uh, Dan Rowan. Oh, weren't you in laughing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Probably heard that your whole life. All right, Dan. In most of your scenes, uh, it, oh, it's just you and a telephone. Was it easier or more difficult to shoot those scenes? And actually, that brings up an interesting point because I thought last week when we talked to uh, Carlos and uh, Reiko, they were saying that when you guys do your cell phone yeah. scenes, you yeah. actually are present for each other. Yeah, because there's so much off-camera stuff in in 24. You'd never see the other actor you were doing the scenes with if they didn't bring them in to uh, to do those off-camera lines. And did they do that also with your daughter, who you hadn't? You know, so yep, yep, every so actor does it. I mean, Keith is in doing the same thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's very good. It's, very, very, it's, it's good they do that. Otherwise, yeah, you, you wouldn't have anything to work with. That must be time, very, quite time demanding. Yeah, now. well, you, you come in and do your stuff, and then um, you have to come in all these other days. But it's good, because you can just sit there in your dirty old jeans and sort of... <laughs> do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, turn on like for me important. today. I'm on the other but side. The, uh, the telephone question you asked with the, the my little earpiece thing. Yes. Some friends of mine saw it, and, and they said, it's very funny. You look like one of these um, these marketing people, <laughs> and, uh, and then with all this outsourcing that's going on, I said, "Yes, I'm actually an outsourced terrorist. I'm working out of India, actually." Right, happens. right, exactly. Yeah. You're like, "Do I'm I?" Not a, I'm not in LA. <laughs> a virus for only 19.95 a month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Kimberly and Brownville. Oh, she's talking about uh, ER and people. See, we already talked about that. They uh, they see you as, as separately. But um, email from Andrew. Why haven't you been in more spy action movies and TV shows? I could picture you as both the perfect villain or hero. Is Andrew your agent? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I'm very fortunate to have, have been doing what I've done up to this point, really. Yeah. So, um, um, 
you know, I've been in some lovely TV shows here. And so can we see you as a James Bond? Um, I don't think that's my decision, is it? <laughs> I hear that rolls up for grabs. Yeah, and I'm sure there's one or two other people <laughs> who might be doing <laughs> few, it as well. A few other Brits. It is funny, though, that I think Brits and, uh, and sometimes Aussies are either cast as villains or reality show hosts. <laughs> One well, or the I'm other. Definitely not interested in the reality show. Oh, good, because that's my purview. Yeah. All right, so um, <laughs> Juliet Howland in the audience. Uh, there you go, Juliet. Thank you for being here. She wants to know if you were a fan of the show before you uh, became an actor on it, because it's seen in the UK. Uh, yeah, and I have to say, I'm not much of a television watcher, and I, I had this terrible situation because um, well, it's not really a terrible situation, but I, 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 I never really know. I go into these auditions, especially since I've been in America, yeah. and I've never seen the show, and all these, these producers go, what do you mean you've never seen ER? What do you mean you've never seen Twin? I'm sorry. I'm, I've heard it's very good. My mother says it's great. She said I should go to the audition. <laughs> um, but no, with 24, it was uh, it obviously being quite an intricate little plot line leading up to the point that I was uh, introduced. Um, I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea. I borrowed one tape to watch just to see how they shoot it because yeah. I heard it was a bit, you know, kind of crazy. Yeah. And um, so I could uh, get ready, prepare myself for that. And did you, I mean, just you, you probably got sucked in like all the other audience did. I mean, because it's very compelling. To I be honest, on that episode, popular. I was, I'd, I watched most of it with the volume down, actually, so I could just see the camera work because otherwise yeah. I would have been thinking like oh, that again, like everyone else. Um, but yeah, so the first episode I really properly watched was with me. More. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that in a pretentious way. Yeah, not in an actual way. I only watch way. television if I'm on it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's half of Hollywood. You yeah, know? You that's go. why everybody has TiVos. All right, uh, we have an email question from Hannah in Sweden. Uh, Paul, you're doing an excellent job as a bad guy. Will we see you in something else once 24 is finished? Do you have anything else you're working on? Um, yeah, I did a pilot for ABC, and um, we find out this coming weekend whether it's going to get picked up and would be on in the fall schedule. Oh. So, uh, Situation comedy. Uh, actually, it's not... The it, wacky terrorist next door. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> Seen me before? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, no, it's, uh, I'm actually playing a New York theater, Broadway theater director with the obligatory neuro neurotic actress wife and um, the five-month-old baby. No, I don't believe it. Yeah. Do you do an American accent? I have done, I can do an American accent. Oh, can we accent. hear some? Oh, please. Come I'm on. Like, <laughs> what, are you crazy? Just say something, a line from the show that you did. Uh, 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 something you would say to your neurotic actress wife. Uh, I did some American earlier on when I described the fella running out the door. Oh. So uh, you have to slip him in. I'm it not going to so sit quick. with the, uh, yeah, you see, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that was the that challenge. Guy. I'm sure he's a long way away from here now. Oh, very good. Yeah. That was very good. That's a totally different character. Love that. <laughs> Okay, email from Jeff in New York. This season of 24 has really uh, picked up since you made your debut, and now nothing, uh, every episode since has been nothing but spectacular. What was your favorite episode or scene to film so far? Um, I think it's the episode you've just seen. Uh, mm -hmm. The explosion. Yeah. The, my helicopter. Yeah. Bye-bye helicopter. Um, yeah, well, actually, my favorite bit about that, when, they, when I was reading the script and thinking, oh, I'm running to my helicopter. Oh, great, I'm going to have a helicopter scene. Yeah. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a helicopter seat. It doesn't work out. There's two F-18s instead. <laughs> um, but the best thing about that was that we were shooting on the L.A. riverbed, which, of course, gets used for filming all the time. But my personal thing that made me most happy about that was the fact that's where they shot Chinatown, and that's where Jack Nicholson ran down. So I was just going to go, it's all right, honey, I'm coming. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're quite a minute, Paul. What happened to my helicopter? Very good. You got to go Lakers ringside now. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. He's a bit older than me. Anyway. So at, at the end there, when uh, you say to Kiefer that you know he knows what you want, see, yes. I'm thinking something hard. like that. Hard. What you want is to kill him. That he's going to have to sacrifice himself. Sort of the way he had to kill Who's going to have to sacrifice you? Kiefer. Like I'll, I'll, the only way I'll hold back the virus is if I get to kill you. Like someone. I'm not brush. satisfied with one death. I think I need about 50 million, don't I? <laughs> One person. All right, we have an audience question. Scott Hamill? Scott, Scott there you Hamill. go. Hello, Scott. Isn't that Star Wars? For, no. That's Mark name? Hamill. Mark Hamill, there you yeah, go. Yeah, 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 very close. There you are. I wonder where you've been. <laughs> yeah, right. Hypothetically speaking, yeah, yeah, you hang out with the laughing guy. Um, hypothetically speaking, if you, could, if you could shag any bird in the cast of 24, who would it be? <laughs> Or maybe 
you or, or a nice candlelit supper? How about that? That's putting it a little nicer, isn't uh, it? How really? about a nice candlelit I supper? I thought the term shag wasn't really a well-known one here in this Well, country. it's Austin Powers. Oh, it's become, yeah, now yeah. everybody knows, yeah. Um, so anyway, what's the next question? <laughs> nice candlelit dinner. Somebody you find attractive. Oh, well, I, well, it has been awful doing all these things to Michelle, hasn't it? Yeah, and she's a very nice girl, too. I'd much rather have a, have, have, have a candlelit dinner with her than rip tape off her face and slap her around the room and all the rest of it. <laughs> are there other actors... Would you like to go out sometime? <laughs> <laughs> that can kind of be a buzzkill. Are, are there actors that you've socialized with? Which actors from the show have you had I lunch? I ignore or... them all. I have no interest in partaking of them all. <laughs> um, no, um, no, not really. I just sort of go off and do my little thing. So you, don't, you haven't really formed any great friendships there? No, they, they don't like me. I'm a terrorist, for God's sakes. <laughs> Did you know Kiefer's work before this? Yeah, I'd heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of Kiefer a name. Kiefer Sutherland. Now yes. I know the name rings a bell. Yes. Um, yeah, oh, and I have to say, it's very strange when you find yourself working with well-known people like that. And mm -hmm. There was a friend of mine, this, um, uh, this Ind Indian film that I did was, um, uh, had a, a fellow called Amir Khan. Mm. In it. And he's like India's Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. He's yeah. huge, I think. And uh, and when you hear about his reputation, you you sort of actually the first time I met him, I didn't know who he was, and it was quite. It was quite I thought he was a waiter in this oh. hotel. It was terrible. Did you tip twenty? Uh, yeah, and he gave me the part. <laughs> um, um, but as someone said once about sitting around with someone like him is a bit like having, sitting around having a chat with royalty. It's kind of not that comfortable. Really. Um, but and at first, of course, because I was completely in awe of Kiefer. Um, um, uh, that that was probably the case. But then, you're but then, over but the then, as as, as you get to work together more and all the rest of it, and he's great to work with. It was fantastic, and we we have more from this point on. We obviously have more to work together with. Oh, and, um, interesting. And it was um, he's great, very giving, and, generous uh, gen actor. Generous act, as they say. Yes, I was trying to give him nothing, but there you go. <laughs> I don't believe you. All right, I have an email from. Ticking away. Hmm. A, a friend name. of yours? Yeah. What aspect of your real life personality is most like Stephen Saunders? <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure if I was a father, I'd be just as a caring parent. Well, as Stephen, and, you have obviously a, and obviously you're thinking about your mom when she comes to town. Yeah, obviously. Uh, no, I, I would say that some of his politics are, um, you know, he, he, uh, America could perhaps not, you know, could ease back a little bit and try to impose itself on the rest of the world. But I'm not sure I would uh, take that so far as viruses. No, well, I think that's actually one of the interesting things about that storyline is, yeah, you could say, well, he, he does have a point. We, have a point. we do muck about a bit, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes good, sometimes bad. Yeah. But I was wondering, like, where, where is... As does my country, so don't worry. Oh, I'm I know. not we're, having a go or anything, we're, we're, just yeah, the same. We're the, we're the, we're the buddies we're on that one. We're tucked in your pocket. But what would be the, the ultimate then for Stephen Saunders? Just absolute anarchy everywhere? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> he does have a well thought out plan, but um, we'll see. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. What's the what's the what's the final final? Okay, we have an email question from Chad Cowling in St. Cloud, Florida. Ah, how do you feel morally about playing a character willing to kill millions with a virus? And it's nice to see a villain that's too smart for CTU. Um, well, I mean, every uh, story of sorts has the bad guy, the yeah. good guy, whatever, and. You don't think you're giving anybody any ideas? It's not like sort of, you know, I don't, you know, that whole act is not advertising cigarettes or something like that, or furs or whatever. It's like, there's always going to be a bad guy. It's just, well, I'll play him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Visor, yeah, yeah, whatever. No ethics over here. Give me the part, please. Right. I'm desperate. Um, <laughs> Meaty so, role. Yeah, I don't, you know, yeah, I, I don't think that's a problem. There's got to be a bad guy in there somewhere else. There'd be no conflict. You'd have very boring television shows. But I think that when you watch it, at least for me, I, I, I do start to think like, oh, my God. Well, what if what if it was what if it was terrorism with a virus? It yeah, well, let's scary. hope it just stays on the television. Yes, absolutely, and um, not in that hotel or whatever. All right, we have an audience question. Is it Andy Whale? Whale? Wheel. All right, Andy. Since the show is so serious, is the mood on the set lively or very serious? Um, it, no, it's a very good mood on the twenty-four set actually, because um, I think. When a show has already become successful um, and people are free and willing to just share and, and discover and explore the whole thing, it leads to just a very good working atmosphere mm -hmm. until somebody farts or something. 
Oh, what have I said? Um, no, it's a very good atmosphere. <laughs> it would be funny because you guys are so dead on to see the outtakes and where, <laughs> yeah. where you crack each other up. I think there's one where my thing just fell off halfway through the tape. My little, <laughs> little, 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 anyway. World domination, if I can get this little headset thing yes, right. Can you get the it's not working. <laughs> All right, we have an email question from the 16-year-old Mr. K in Montreal, Canada. All right, if uh, Stephen Saunders had to fight Jack Bauer, no weapons, fist, fist to fist, who would win? Um, you know that big fella dressed in black that works for me? Yes. Uh, well, he'd be standing right in front of me, and he'd win. Okay, but if it was just you and Jack? <laughs> yeah, like I said, there'd be the big guy in front of me, okay? Uh, no, I'm a bit taller than, uh, than Jack, but um, who knows? It could be an interesting duel. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very diplomatic. He probably punched me straight in the nose. and go, oh! <laughs> what are that for? I'm not You're not so strong without your virus, huh, Stephen? Yeah. Huh? Where's the virus? All oh. right. We have an email from Debbie Habbins. Did you appear, oh, you did talk about this, in Holby City, a hospital drama in the UK. Yeah. My friend is sure you did. But so it had a big following, Holby City. Yeah, it's, it's a big show. It's a big BBC show over there. And, um, and uh, yeah, I was the baddie. <laughs> <laughs> what was your training in the UK? Um, well, I have a... Uh, I first did musical theatre when I was 10, oh. through to about 16, did the Edinburgh Festival and the London West End and what have you. And then, um, then after a bit of in and out of the acting world, I, I basically spent two years studying psychology of acting with a, with a teacher over there. You take off the top of your head, look at it, and you go, Ugh, and then try and fix that and then put it back, and now hopefully you can be a good actor. That and would be helpful. Still working on it. Yes, of course. Would you like to do a, a, a musical send-up of 24? Absolutely not. <laughs> I've got a virus in my pocket. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, you can be one of the agents. There you go. <laughs> All right, we have an audience question from Dan. Now, Dan, he's following up. He says there's a rumor that you are going to be the next James Bond. This is a, a kind of big rumor, isn't it, really? I think there's a guerrilla so, campaign afoot okay. here. Um, well, just keep going with that petition thing that's on there. Then. Yeah, right. <laughs> Or you could, I could, certainly you could play a villain in a Bond. No, I wouldn't want to play another villain. In, no. Not, not in a Bond film. If you're going to because then Bond you feel film. like you'd be typecast. Then you're Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Alan Rickman or any of the hundreds right. of others. Yeah. Um, no, it's nice, to, um, it's nice to do a bit, of, a bit of each, you know. A bit of character, yeah. a bit of good, a bit of bad, whatever. You know. Is there something uh, that you haven't conquered that you'd like to? I mean, I joked about a situation comedy, but is, is there some kind of... That uh, show that you haven't done that you'd like to do? Um, actually, I've been quite lucky. I've done quite a sort of scope of things, but situation comedy certainly wouldn't be one of them, I have to say. Yeah. Um, no. Be funny. Well, they yeah. give you a script. Ah, you know. They give you a script. It's so, all very, very formulaic. Yeah, setup, I know, setup. but I, it's, that would be uh, a bit too much, I think. Okay. It's all like right. Hugh Grant said, he, someone said, Do you think you're a good romantic comedy actor? And he said, Well, I'm very good in rehearsal. <laughs> He's not aren't, so bad when it comes to the take either, but there you go. Aren't we all really to rehearsal? <laughs> all right. Well, uh, and then um, the we just need to know if we think if, if you will will Stephen be back next season? Ah, mum's the word. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much. A big hand for Paul Blackwell. You're great. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, you Brogdon, you've been watching 24 Inside, which is brought to you by the day after tomorrow. It's going to be in theaters worldwide May 28th. Where will you be? All right. We will see you next week for another exciting episode of 24 Inside. And if you haven't already seen the tonight's episode from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., you got to catch up. you got to catch up. And you will see who we're talking to next week. That's part of the suspense as well. All right. See you later. Ten thousand years ago, one storm changed the face of our planet. If we don't act now, it's going to be too late. On May 28th, it will happen again. It's just massive. From the director of Independence Day. What can we do? Save as many as you can. A wall of water! Where will you be the day after tomorrow? Rated PG-13, Memorial Day.